ethical questions have also come up about who is receiving the experimental drug to treat Ebola and who's not. With more on this issue, we're joined by Glenn Cohen, his director of the Petri Flom Center for Health Law Policy, Biotechnology and Bioethics at Harvard Law School. So, uh, Glenn, how does it look when three people from the West have gotten the drug while most of the people with Ebola are African? What is the policy for distributing this drug? So the optics are obviously bad, but if we look as to how this came about, I think the situation's a little bit more complex. So to be clear, what happened was Samaritan's Purse, which is an international evangelical aid organization, reached out to the San Diego-based corporation that makes this drug and made a request for these uh, Americans who were living and working in that area. Now, that's not the way in which we expect further doses to be uh, distributed. And in fact, the African countries right now may be reaching out to the same company. Usually, when we think about what's ethical, we begin with a principle that people who work as healthcare workers who are on the front lines, who are risking their lives, they deserve first priority. So, Glenn, I, I guess my question is, who makes that decision? Who makes the decision which countries or which patients are going to receive this drug? And who's not? So right now, this is an experimental drug. It hasn't been approved by the FDA. And essentially, individual countries or individual groups are going to this particular San Diego-based company and asking it for dosages. Now, once it has been approved, or if a government gets involved, the US government, the Sierra Leone government, typically there are local decisions being made. Sometimes those decisions are even made at smaller levels, like the city level. So Massachusetts, New York, they may have their own plan. And we've seen this with pandemic flu, for example. There are plans in place to specify who gets priority. And usually it's first healthcare workers. And then usually it's some mix of people who we expect to have the best outcomes, who's likely to recover if infected, and people who are in the highest need, who's closest to death and needs the drug immediately. So apparently Nigerian officials say they asked U.S. health authorities about getting this, as you mentioned, experimental drug, but were not helped. So do you think that is the main reason they were not? I mean, so I don't know enough about the dealings that the Nigerian health authorities had with this particular uh, company in San Diego. Uh, you have to remember this was experimental. Before this, it wasn't tested in anything but animals. This was the first human trial. We didn't know it would help. And it's good news that it has worked. But now there's going to be a huge demand for this drug. And there'll be a question about whether this company can keep up and keep up the supply. So Glenn, do you expect this drug to get approval so it will not just be an experimental drug? And at that point, do you think every person who needs it will be able to get it? So the company will be free once it's approved to set the terms, even now when it's experimental, set the terms by which it sells it and gives it. There is something in intellectual property known as margin rights, where a company can, a country can declare that from now on there's not going to be a patent. You can do a generic version of that. I think that'd be very hard to do given the science here. One more point just to emphasize is that this kind uh, of treatment requires a lot of expertise in handling and a lot of refrigeration. So it's not clear you're going to be able to get it out into the rural areas, even if you wanted to. All right. Thank you so much. We'll leave it at that. Glenn Cohen.